What's up, anime fans? James Townsend here, and welcome to another review. This time, I'll be reviewing episode 84 of Yu Gi Oh! Reigns. Now, the exciting conclusion to the Revolver vs. Soul Burner duel is uh, what I'd like to say, but unfortunately, it was not really a duel or great at all, really. Essentially, what it was, it was hyped up to be this good duel between Soulburner and Revolver, but it was a big disappointment. Basically, Soulburner, with his rage and anger, summons out his ace monster, Hito Mayo, and completely disregards anything that anyone else is saying, even Flame. He puts Flame up as a um, condition that if he loses, Revolver can have Flame which isn't good at all and basically the thing for him winning is just it's not equipment exchange at all because if he wins he says he can hold Revolver accountable for everything but in his mind he already is accountable for everything anyway he gets his ace out ends his turn because he can't attack turn one Revolver just open, draws a card, gets a good card a card that he could use to actually help win but just ends his turn, you know, don't care. And then Soulburn is in a position to win because he summons another monster. However, if he can't attack, he falls to his knees in dramatic Yu-Gi-Oh fashion, screams out, and the door just comes to a stop. Very disappointing. So afterwards, Playmaker gives Soulburn a pep talk, which calms him down a bit, and Revolver then takes us to the old Link Frames. The old Link Frames where the knight, uh, not the knight, sorry, the Tower of Hanoi is standing. Revolver then explains that his plan is to bring back the Hanoi Tower in order to reprogram it as a scanner. This will then scan the entirety of Link Frames to find where Team Lightning is. After reassuring Team Playmaker that everyone can help program this thing so that the Knights of Hanoi can't betray him afterwards, um, they agree to it and they will work on basically programming this device. The while they're all programming, Takiru, aka Soulburner, and Flame have a nice sort of one to one sort of chat. Flame's basically asking. Takiru the question, why are you invited? Revolver doesn't actually need Soulburn. I mean, not for his dueling skills really, because Revolver is ten times better than Soulburn in terms of dueling, and she's not a hacker, so Takiru slash Soulburn has no sort of place in the team up. If Revolver wanted Flame, as Flame stated, you could have just convinced Playmaker to hand Flame over later. So, that was a nice... The conversation sort of ended, basically stating that maybe Revolver just wants to apologise to all the Lost Incident children, and since Takiru is one of them, he just wants to communicate with Soulburner slash Takiru on that sort of level and win his trust back. So that was a nice little moment. And then the program is sort of rebuilt and it gets activated. Once activated, it's, it's revealed to us, the audience, that there is a mirror Link Frames. And this is told also to the Soltech company and it's shown to us that Lightning also knows that Playmaker team now knows where they are. So the episode basically ends with um, the team basically going to the mirror world. And basically that's it. The preview for next week's episode shows Haru versus, um, what is she now? Aoi. It's Aoi, but it's Blue Maiden. Um, but before all that though, I forgot to mention there was a nice little sort of scene between Bowman and Haru where Haru's just like, I don't know what it's like to be a brother. I'm only programmed slash told to be your brother to keep your emotions in check. And it showed that 
Bowman actually is starting to show emotion. He's developing emotions like that because he's getting angry. He's getting ticked off at Haru for saying the things that really he doesn't have to say or need to say. So that was nice. In terms of animation, this was a huge step up from last week's episode. After all, last week's was a recap, so it's all reused. This time, it was a brilliant sort of montage of just different animated sequences, really. But the only slight, slight sort of bad animated bit was when the camera pans out and they're all sort of um, activating the Hanoi Tower again. And you see all the characters on like the ground. That bit was a little bit janky in terms of animation. But the actual animated part of the Hanoi Tower coming back was just really stunning and aesthetically pleasing to look at. As well as the um, the stream that is in the background when they're going to the Mirror World. That was really nice. It was like a digital sort of feel to it. But at the same time, it was like a mystic gateway. Now the other thing I want to mention is Windy. Windy actually survived. He's not dead. He's kind of got a new appearance. He's got like um, a weird sort of W scar on his eye now. Almost, wait, was it a lightning bolt? Might have been a lightning bolt actually. And she's wearing like a sort of old edgy western sort of clo uh, coat slash cloak. Much like a cowboy. However, when I first saw this design, what it reminded me of is something the, um, what's his name? I've forgotten his name now. What's his name? I'm slipping up here. Emma's brother, Blood Shepherd. It reminds me of an outfit that Blood Shepherd would actually wear. And we've already had it where AIs are put into humans. So could Windy be, or have, Blood Shepherd's consciousness inside of him as a way to sort of like make the reprogramming of Windy sort of faster. I'm sure Lightning would have the intelligence to do that. As well as the fact is, Eyes being a bit sketchy again. Like in season one and a little bit in season two, he's been a bit sketchy. And in this episode, we see him sort of programming or tampering with Yusaku's little robot, a house cleaning robot. So whatever he's up to there, I have no idea. Maybe he's like, he does actually state that he feels like something bad's gonna happen. So maybe he's imported some of himself inside that robot so that if Windy kills off I later, there's a way to bring it back. That sounds like it'd be possible. But let me know your thoughts on what uh, you think of Windy's outfit and design, as well as what you think I's up to in the comment section down below. But other than that, this episode had great music, good sound effects, good animation apart from that one scene I mentioned, and overall it was a lot better than last week's. So that's going to do it for this review. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, let me know in, your, in the comments down below. Subscribe and join the Bananime squad today for more videos like this. But other than that, I'll see you next week for the next review of Brains, or in any other content you wish to watch from this channel. Bye for now.